All right, this is a remodeling job we did here for my son's bathroom. He picked pine on the wall, and we chose the roof angle. It is a uh, cathedral ceiling. We had to put an exhaust fan in. It had a fan that went to nothing, nowhere land, and it didn't work. And uh, we took the ceiling down. We took the walls, which were um, wallpaper, pretty ugly, and it had pink floor tile. We left the shower alone. It wasn't, you know, it's not great. I wish he kept it a little cleaner, but it's not great, but it works. It had a shower head that come out right here. It's about at my eye level. And it worked fine when he was five, but he's taller than I am now. And he complained that he couldn't get his head under it. So we moved it up. But to move it up, um, oh, we put a speaker light in. Let me go back here. A speaker light, we put a an extra vanity storage mirror we put in a fancy uh this is something he, he picked everything in here this is a push button light if i can see it here and it dims on and off it's pretty cool stuff got a gfi we got a, a charging outlet in here for his phones it has electric heat he picked out a uh, a wood look floor tile we took out the pink tiles uh put in new vanity a little modern and uh, did, some, did a lot of upgrades, insulate. Um, oh, we even put in a window. It didn't have a window. And a bath without a window is, is terrible in my case. You can't vent it. You can't see. Um, it's pretty cold outside right now. It's going to be like below zero tonight. But uh, that's why we're doing this inside job. But anyways, back to that shower head. It was so low, I wanted to move it up. And to do so, out here in the hallway, I had to cut a hole. And it, the shower, I can't even say it, the shower handle is way down low here. And I did a stud finder and I couldn't find properly the studs. And that's because there's a bunch of cross bridging here. Kind of messed me up. But to move the shower head up, this is copper plumbing. It used to go out right there and I put in one of them chrome covers and we extended the same pipe up and I put on a uh, PEX extension here. So we moved it up and the drywall, when I cut it out, I didn't want to make it too big so that I couldn't put a cover on. I purchased this, um, it's an Ote brand um, spring loaded cover that I wanted to the back of the shower faucet just in case we have to change that out and so today's project would be to repatch this drywall and when I cut this out I was careful to save the drywall I did some mapping and this one it's a factory cut they put the put it in here horizontal see that fits in there pretty nice really nice actually okay and then this one Factory edges down here. See that? Sometimes it pays to be careful when you take things apart because then they go back together. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'll patch the top. And then I have to make this a little wider for the bottom faucet here. Um, the reason I left this wall open was I wanted him to use his bathroom and make sure there was no leaks or anything in here. And then, of course, it got delayed. Um, but the first thing I want to do is on this access panel, I don't know if you can see that spring loaded, you just uh, can grip your fingers and pop it out. And I wanted it real flush. We can paint it the wall color when I paint the wall. And I didn't bring a tape measure up here, but this has a, a number on it. And it's a little over 12 I made. And this is a 14. Yeah. So the center of the faucet's here. If I stay at the bottom, that should work out real good. And I'll just come in like that. And I could go either one way or the other. And I think it doesn't really matter. Because I can reach in here. So I probably ought to go that way. And so I just want to make... A mark at 14 and prior let me check and see how plumb this is it's plumb 
So let's see, make sure both sides are plumb. And it is. So if I just make a mark and come over, I don't even have a pencil with me, but I'll show you what I'm gonna do is here's a 14 mark. And I'll come up, make another 14. Okay. And then this is this is a 14 by 14, so I can come up again a 14, make a mark. And this is a cheating way. We don't want to carry a lot of tools upstairs. And 14. So now we just connect the dots. And then I'll make a mark. We use our little Ryobi Dremel tool, our little oscillating tool. Here's my pencil mark. I'll double check my numbers. This old level's getting pretty rough. Make sure we're 14. 14, 14. Get down here. That looks pretty good. Double check it, I'll just throw this up here. Yep, that should work. So we'll just take and cut this out first. And then I want to show you what I like to do. take we'll go ahead and open up our access panel test it out make sure I cut it right my luck we um, if I had just put the drywall in and taped it I'd probably go about six months or a year and the faucet would start dripping then we got to replace it it's so much easier right now to get to this and because I use the PEX uh, push on I can squeeze that leave the shower head and then I can install a couple PEC shutoff valves and just remove this whole assembly and install a new valve. So here's our access cover. We just take these side clips and push them inward. Set this on the bottom. Set our side in there. Set our other side in there. Let's see how close we are. So there's our access panel. So this piece that was going to go in there has to be just a little bit shorter now. So that would uh, that would make sense for us just to... And then when you want to take this out, I want to show you, just grab a hold of it and spring load. So it's easy to get in there if we need to be, but we can paint it to color the wall. Okay, to install this, like I said, I wanted to keep this panel small. So I did my stud finder, but as you can see back in here, this is the reason I had trouble, is there's a stud here, and it stopped. Then they have a bridge that goes way back behind there, so there's no stud here, no stud there. The next stud is clear way over here. So I, I really don't know how, why they did it like this. I wouldn't have, I would have had my studs. But anyways, we have to fix it. So. The only stud in place is the one here in the middle on my line. So what we need is something to attach to. So I'm just going to take some scrap lumber. I've got just junk I grabbed outside, left over. And we're going to take some drywall screws, one and five eighths. We're going to start them right here. And this will give us a nice nailer to hook to. This board is an inch and a half wide. I 
just put this in there. We're going to go up above it. We're going to split the difference. And we're going to see if this will hit it. And then the same with this one. Just feel if they're under the surface. I don't want them sticking out. I don't have the right bit in the drill right now, but it's a Phillips. It's just not a recess bit. I think it's called a dimple bit. It's just a one that you screw in until the screw stops. So you get the idea. So that's pretty strong already. That's going to give me something to attach to. We can hook here and then we also have to put one here. I'll probably come down here at the bottom where this ends, down in here, and I'll put one here too so our corners are stationary. And then um, I'm not too worried on this access panel because it's only two inches long here. So yeah, I'll come back on and I'll show you the after I get these attached. All right, we got we got all these um, nailers on, and they're pretty rugged. They're just scrap lumber, but it gives us a good spot to attach to. And by putting the screws in the drywall, the existing drywall where these are, really tighten this wall up. It don't, it don't even jiggle now. So what we can do is we just come around and clean up the edge. Sometimes when you put the screw in, like here, you break the edge of the drywall. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. There's another one. Can you see this right there? My tight piece won't fit back in there because we mushroomed the side out. And what we're going to do is put our piece in there. I'd like to have this look really decent like we were never in there. And just remember where the pipes are. And I always put them wires and pipes back at least the length of the screw so you can't ever hit them. And so this will, should fit right in there, beautiful. It does, isn't that nice? So now, if I'm talented, I'll take, this should be magnetic. No, it's not, my assistant will. Okay, that fits in there really nice because I was careful about cutting it. So I just wanna get my screws in without breaking the paper too bad here. Use that little collar. Like I said, I should have used a little dimple bit. I didn't feel like going looking for it. So just, just be careful not to put the screw in so far you tear the paper and lose the strength. And I just want to get, get our patch put on. And then um, after I get all these screws on, um, the next thing to do here. I'll go back and finish these up off camera, but I want to get all the screws in and then you take your putty knife or tape knife and go over your screws. Make sure you don't hit one. If you, if you hear a click like this, that'll be bad when you go to tape it. It'll be a bump in there. So now what we got to do is take this piece, our original, put that up there and we're going to take and put a mark on it where our 14 is and then we can use this as our marker for our 14 only because we don't have a tape measure we're too lazy to go get one so there's our mark and then I want to cut this out we can use this for a straight edge even little tight quarters but this is a nice job to do when it's almost zero outside. So there's our our mark. And then I'll just cut that out. I don't even have a knife up here, so I'm gonna use this oscillating tool again. Son and I like to use these Ryobi tools a lot. This was up there. Where did I put my mark? Yep, that looks good.
And that'll be our patch. And then we had our factory edge up. Like that, see how nice that lines up. Get a couple screws in that. I'm gonna switch my batteries again. And then this one. Like I said, I was pretty careful when I cut this to begin with, as you can tell. It's not too bad of a patch. And then we're up about this far. And then after I get all these screws in, I'll come back on and show you what I want to do next. Then do a couple adjustments here. And now just recheck the head of the screws, make sure none are out. And then we'll carefully slip that panel in and see. Now we can access the back of the faucet. And then the panel just sits in like so. Like that. And then I don't know if the spring caught. Did it? Didn't sound no. it. There. And then um, we'll tear the sticker off. And there you go. And we can paint that to color the wall. I'm going to go ahead and tape and spackle this. I'll get one coat on it tonight. All right, I got some uh, lightweight joint compound. I had some left over here that I was using in another project. So let me get a gob out here, kind of estimate how much we're going to need to go do in there. I'm, only, I'm not going to put on too heavy. Uh, now I got some fiber mesh tape, but see how good it sticks? Not too well. This is actually the one that belongs on the top. I cut this one just a hair longer. So it overlaps. This is an old roll I had. I'm not too worried if it sticks. I'll show you why. See, it's not going to stick. We take our mud. We'll put a little thin coat up there. Slap it in the crack. I shouldn't say it like that. Put it in like that. Smooth that off. Take our fiber tape. I like the fiber for seams like this. I like paper when I use it in the corners. And then I'll just take a, start in the middle-ish, come this way, turn around, go this way. Put the excess down in here. Do a thin little overcoat. I got my other horizontal here. Yeah, that won't stick either. Just slap some of this in there. Give it something to stick to. I could have bought new drywall, but I couldn't see the reason for it. So you just smooth that off a little bit. And then I cut my sides. And this is a little stickier. See if it'll stay on. Line that up here at the bottom. Doesn't matter if I go too far up. Hey, she's gonna stay on. Oh, I got a piece of dirt in there off the tape. So we just put our little mud on there. And if you don't want it wrinkled, you start like at the center, go one direction. Once you get your mud on, it won't matter. But if you start at the top and come down, you get a wrinkle. See that wrinkle? So grab your mud. Go up. And then I'll follow back up. See, we got a little dirt because I dropped these on from our drywall dust there. But uh, we'll put it on a little heavy. And I'll show you why. I'll just come back through. We'll get this side done. Get 
usually if you put your compound on first, as long as you can see your seam, this works out pretty good. See, I dropped this on the floor and I didn't, I didn't vacuum the floor from our cutting out with an oscillating tool, so I got junk in it. Wasn't too smart. Okay. Line our bottom up because I don't want it beyond the opening. I don't care up there. Set that in. We'll mud up. See how that bubbles up. We just bring it down. And then I'll snow plow inward. Snow plow. And then almost can't reach the top too good here. I think I wrinkled that a little. You know, I could use a little more light in here, but And that's about it, guys. What we're going to do is uh, smooth this out. Get uh, I don't want to use this much mud on it. We'll get our screw heads covered. Usually, i got to do two to three coats. And I'm going to widen my knife out. This is, a, this is actually a, a quick flash tool for tape. It's not even for drywall. But I'm just going to take off the excess mud here. You want to move your knife up. Let's say a six inch on the second coat and I'll finish up with like a 14 on the final coat and that'll blend side to side and uh, maybe I'll come back on and I'll show you a finished product and because we're in the house in the winter time I really don't want to sand this because you get a lot of fine dust so I think I'm going to use a, uh, a wet sponge and I'll wet wet sand this and it's dustless sandy I've done it before it's a little I think it's a little more labor and sloppy but it uh, if you can put your joint compound on as thin as possible you know you're not hitting it too much with a sponge we'll come down and knock our high spots off get this all pinned up good and then I'll probably come back on. See, I'm wrinkling that because I can't reach it. I should have Dawson do it because he's like taller than I am now. I don't know why kids are growing. So, I'll get that as smooth as I can. I, uh, I'll get something, a little step, so I can get up and reach it. All right, I got the first coat done, and if you want to back up enough, you can get a general idea that it's pretty flat and that's what you want I don't want to play with it too much um, I usually want it on a little thinner than that but I it probably should have started with a wider knife but um, this should look good and I think in the morning I can come back and um, I'll take a wider knife and I'll just scrape the little high spots off and I'll put a real thin second coat it'll take an hour to dry and then I can get a third coat on tomorrow I'll get the cobwebs down there too and um, we're going to get pretty close to sanding, so that's, I just wanted to show you a quick drywall patch. Good thing to do in the winter months here. It's a thing I was going to do after our bath remodel, but it got into warm weather and I don't like to work inside in the summer. So um, I'll come back on tomorrow and show you what we got. All right, guys, we got uh, the second coat of joint compound put on our wall patch here, and it dried overnight. And I want to show you a, duh, a better way to sand on some situations than sandpaper. We got clean water, warm water I'm using, and I've got a sponge. This one is a uh, Pro Plus. Um, I use it for, you know, ceramic tiles when I'm cleaning out grout. I'm not going to wring it out too much, but I'm going to go on here and wet sand this. So what I want to do is just get this damp, the whole thing first, let it start to soften. And in some situations, you don't want to get the sander out. And I've got a nine inch drywall sander, you know, pole sander, I can reach the ceiling. And it's got a dust 
collection on it and so on, but a lot of dust still hits the floor. And um, I don't feel like doing the fine dusting. So this is another way to sand. It's a little sloppy sometimes, you get too much water on it. And sometimes you have to come back over it with another coat if you get a little crazy with it. Like here's a little groove, a couple little dimples. I'll probably come back and do a final coat on this. Um, but right now I just want to get that damp. And sometimes those little bumps will come out of it. I wrung this out a little bit. And I'm just coming in at a circular motion around our edges to blend it in with the wall. There's different ways you can go about it. The more pressure you put on, the more joint compound will come off. And I want to keep it kind of flat. And this cleans up the edges nice. Doesn't take any electricity. And I don't need a mask. We all like the masks. But when you wear glasses and you put a mask on, you start fogging up. I can't see too much. I probably should get additional light right now. But you get the hint here. What it does is, I'll show you my water here. It pulls a lot of joint compound off in a hurry. The edges you can feel, feel real lightly. There's a little edge there. Try to go in a circular motion sometimes. Blend it in. And sometimes you can move a little material over to like a little dimple air bubble. And uh, like I said, I may have to come back over this and do a little tiny skim coat. But I just want to show you how I'm achieving this without having to dust the whole house. And like there's that groove. Sometimes you go like this and you can get some of it out. I don't want to go down so much that I expose the tape. We have to let that one go. And then come back and just do a little final skim coat, which will take a half an hour to dry. And then a light, a light sponge sand. And I'll be ready to prime and paint this. I haven't figured out the paint color yet. I'm gonna check that out with my son, see what color he wants up through here. It's a complicated hallway. There's uh, four closets in it. Good for storage and a laundry chute. But the whole object of this was to give us an access panel. They put the sticker right on it, but a spring loaded, that'll fit right in there. And then when we paint, we can paint right over it. So it's it'll be visible. But um, definitely better than punching a hole in the wall again to uh, get access if I ever need to upgrade the faucet, shower faucet. And uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you can see well from there, but this is pretty smooth right now. A couple little dimples there. I think if I come over this with a, a wide knife, I got a 14, I can go over that. Just do a real fine skim coat back and forth. Fill the little air bubbles, pockets, and this is going to be a wrap, guys. Uh, paint next, prime and paint. Maybe paint, paint and primer in one I'll probably use. And um, we'll get some color choices and anything to get rid of this, uh, I don't know if it's called antique white, but it's like apartment color paint you see everywhere, all one color. I'm going to get rid of that. So, see, that's almost gone. I really can't feel it. I can see it because it was on there with two coats, but um, I think I just a little tiny skim coat. There's a couple air bubbles. The edges look really nice. So, that's a hint for you guys. Just a sponge, water, a lot of it come out of here. And so, what'd that take me? A little over five minutes? So, maybe I'll show you a final. Come back on when we get this all done. Through the camera, it looks really well. So, yeah, I think that's going to work. Here's another little project I'm working on. Is um, This used to be a double window. It's up about 12 feet in a foyer area here. And uh, I removed the window when we worked on the roof there. 
it's, it goes out above the roof and it was really close to the roof and it's hard to maintain anything up there. So when we did the roof, we removed the windows, we studded it in, insulation, it's a six inch wall, um, vapor barrier drywall, and I just put three coats of joint compound and I wet sanded it so it wasn't dusty. And then the only thing we have to do when this is totally dry is just go back with a damp sponge, just really damp, and then get any fine dust off of that before we prime and paint it. And let me go out and show you the uh, patch that we put on the uh, water access. And here it is with the cover on. I think the total time to put in the drywall, the uh, the two coats, I only put two coats on this and wet sanded it. Um, put the access panel for the shower. That's gonna be painted right over. It's a 14 inch square. And uh, yeah, so that's a quick way to, I think I've got a total of it an hour on that. It was broken up over two days, but I got about an hour total. The wet sanding took about a little over five minutes as you saw. And I went back over where I thought there was a little groove in it, hit a little bit more with the wet sanding and it's gone. So this is ready for prime and paint. And uh, we just need to pick our paint color.